the presidency says there is no misunderstanding between the office of the president and that of the vice president in what looks like an obvious political undercurrent is there a rift between buhari and oshibajo we dissect that right on the program and a group has gone to court seeking the nullification of the NDC board nominations as forwarded by President Muhammad Buhari and screened by the Senate. Hello everyone and welcome to the program. This is Politics Today live on Channels Television. I'm Sean Wakimalo. It's Wednesday and we have the whole of the hour up until 8 p.m. tonight to give you some of the hottest and perhaps some of the biggest political stories we have for you. Let's begin here in Lagos. His Excellency, the Governor of Lagos State, Mr. Babajide Sonwolu, says he has dropped the appellation of Your Excellency. The Governor, in a statement, says he wishes to be addressed simply as Mr. Governor, a title that we constantly remind him that he has been chosen out of so many fellow compatriots to lead a collective savage of our political economy. Mr. Sonwolu says he has come to the conclusion that for us to challenge or change the narrative of governance, we have to strike down the seeming symbol of executive arrogance that commands popular obeisance and undermines the democratic rule, role of citizens as the masters of those that have elected and appointed them to serve. There's some political stories we will not be discussing on the program, but some of them you need to know. Take a look at them on our political roundup. The Court of Appeal in Kaduna State has nullified the election of Senate spokesperson Mr. Dayo Adeyeye and upheld the tribunal judgment which declared Senator Biodun Lujimi of the People's Democratic Party as winner of the Akiti South senatorial election. The Independent National Electoral Commission had declared Mr. Daya Adeyeye of the All Progressives Congress as winner of the February 23, 2019 National Assembly election. But Mrs. Olujimi challenged the result at the tribunal on the grounds that she scored the highest number of votes cast. Judges at the appellate court unanimously upheld the judgment of the tribunal and ordered INET to issue fresh certificate of return to Senator Biodun Olujimi. A PDP lawmaker, Honorable Benson Ibakba, is asking the House of Representatives to stop Honorable Kingsley Chinda and all the lawmakers from parading themselves as leaders of the PDP caucus. The point of order was raised following a statement from the Kingsley Chinda camp describing themselves as leaders of the PDP caucus of the House. Mr. Chinda and some PDP lawmakers have distanced themselves from the activities of other PDP members in the House of Representatives following the refusal of the Speaker, Femi Gwajabia Mila, to honor the request of the PDP chairman when he sent in names to be recognized as minority leaders of the House. Mr. Gwajabia Mila instead recognized another list which was signed by other minority parties in the House. The matter has been referred to the House Committee on Ethics and Privileges to investigate and report back to the House. Mr. Femi Falunan says his client Omoyele Shore and his co-defendant Olawale Bakare preferred against them by the federal government. Falunan who announced this at the resumed trial of Omoyele Shore at the Federal High Court in Abuja, however, asked for an adjournment on the ground that he has not been able to gain access to the defendants who have been in custody of the Department of State Services. Kano State Governor Abdullahi Ganduja has officially sworn in new commissioners to form his executive cabinet six months since he was sworn in for a second term in office. The commissioners were also handed their letters of appointment. Okay. Thank you so much, everyone, for staying with us. Ah, so much to talk about now. Where shall we begin from? Let's begin from the presidential villa where there seems to be some political undercurrent this matter has been up for conversation uh, on the program at some point but it's coming up again and again and this also came up because of what happened uh, a day ago or two days ago when the president signed a bill in London but today the president has said there is no misunderstanding between the office of the president and that of the vice president. The senior special assistant to the president on National Assembly matters, Senator Babajide Omowurare, made this clarification while briefing journalists at the National Assembly earlier today while responding to critics who have questioned President Buhari's decision to sign the amended Deep Offshore Act in London. Senator Omowurare insists that the constitution permits the president 
to work from anywhere. He explains that the scenario is different from that of former President Omar Musiradua and Vice President Gulag Jonathan, where the former was at the time unable to discharge his duties because of ill health. He was, however, silent on why the president did not transmit a letter to the National Assembly handing over responsibilities to the vice president. Take a listen to him. By any way or manner, the office of the vice president has been um, relegated. The, as you all know, the position of the president of Nigeria he could work wherever he is at any point in time, whether he's in the country or he's outside the country. I don't think there is any way whatsoever that the position of the vice president has been relegated, and I think the president is performing his functions where he is. Let's get a sense of what this all means. I mean, a lot of people who think perhaps some of the best relationship that we will find between the president and the vice has been between Buari and Oshimbacho since 1999, at least, if we trace uh, the history of uh, those two offices. But some are of the opinion of the school of thought that something has gone wrong. It gets so uh, bad tonight as we tried as much as we can to even get people within the presidency or within the APC. A lot of people who are not willing to speak about this matter tonight who wanted to dissect what is happening, the political undercurrent, some of the things that are heard, those things that are not seen, but are happening in the presidential villa. After tonight, one person has also spoken in the early days of when a lot of people thought something is wrong, is Mr. Nienke Odumak, and he speaks for Afeni Ferrer, he's also a social commentator. Thank you so much for coming on tonight. Uh, good evening. Also, we have a social commentator and public affairs analyst from Wisconsin in the United States, Mr. Fola Ojo. He's a columnist in one of Nigeria's uh, major newspapers. He joins us from Wisconsin. Thank you so much, Mr. Uh, Fola Ojo, for joining us tonight. Perhaps I, I should uh, begin with you, uh, Mr. Dumakin. You have spoken about what you have referred to as somewhat relegating the office of the vice president. Did you see or have you seen anything uh, to buttress that thought. Thank you so much. There has been severe assault on that office for a long time now, because since after I think uh, Shiba Joe sacked uh, Lawa Dara, there has never been any data transmitted to the Assembly whenever the president was starting out of the country. I said that we have seen that most of the functions given to the office have been stripped. Many have to be taken to the Ministry of Managerial Affairs. Now, we can say that most of those functions are at the discussion with the president. But the question of the president transmitting power to the vice president when he's leaving the country is a constitutional matter. It's not at his discretion. The question says that when the president is going out of the country, he shall write to the assembly, transmit power to the vice, and when he comes back, we will send another letter. That has not been done in this case. What you have now seen the, in your face was the uh, chief of staff taking bids to London for the president to sign. Now, I remember about three weeks ago when uh, the Odofe made uh, Chief Adibu Tukashin to Odofe. I was there. The president was there. And it was Minister of Interiors, Ralph Abueshola, who got up to read the president's speech as the president, where the administration, where the VP was present. Now, we have heard now... Is that a breach of protocol? That's, that's a clear breach of protocol. What about the fact that if the president or the vice president is attending in his personal... Capacity. In his personal capacity, not as a vice president. Yes. And the president is invited, yeah. maybe because of a relationship that he has with the celebrant. Yes. Well, is, even if at that, when things were normal, that would not happen. If the VP was there, it's things are abnormal oh, yeah. right now. Oh, clearly. If, if in that number of circumstances, the VP can attend in an event to, where the president is invited to, but will represent the president, not a minister. So now, we have not confirmed now the, the sacking of the 35 It's, it's all, about the, all about the news. If you have gotten to that point, the vice president, Roman, there is something in Yoruba that says that, that death 
It's better than some, than some indignities. And I remember this gentleman, Commodore Butikiwe, who was chief of general staff to Babangida, because he was not consulted over, over OIC, he didn't go through all these indignities. He puts in the letter, take your job, I'm out of here. So why all this will be happening? The people will be quiet, like a hostage. It's what still baffles us. You think this is about, because I mean, I've read and I've heard a lot of stuff. Yes. And a lot of people said, well, it's about 2023 politics. Do you think so? Well, 2023 politics is secondary. As of today, Professor Yemi Oshibajo is the Vice President of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. He has not been removed. But they are behaving as if he's not there anymore. But is there anything other? Because, uh, I mean, if you list uh, uh, a lot of stuff. Yes. Uh, for example, a uh, few days before the president announced that he has set up uh, 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 an economic advisory council, yeah. there was a meeting of the economic uh, uh, council headed by the vice president. Yes. Uh, we understand from, the, uh, from uh, people on the inside that the VP got that information on social media that there is uh, a, an economic advisory council. Also, a lot of people will think that the SIPs, uh, the social investment program, has been taken out of the president's... Uh, uh, VP, yeah. uh, it's been taken out of the VP's office. Yeah. All of this, if you list a whole lot of things, four, five, six things that are happened almost at the same time, and some of the issues raised when the VP said he was going to sue two persons who spoke against his person. If you list all of these things and how these things perhaps are coming from some quarters, a lot of people had ascribed that these are internal wranglings or political undercurrent within the APC. Do you think so? In fact, when you talk about the allegations against the vice president by Timmy Frank and that person, which is nothing to sue, and he has not sued to date. Beyond it's not suing, as we speak, the presidency has not made any response to those with the allegations. When Nigeria was Nigeria, that allegation, that allegation was enough to bring down the government. And so it's carrying that moral body. Oh, is it true? Is it not true? I will sue. He did not sue. And that's why people are just thinking, is this, is this man a hostage? But, but because all that has been done to him, there is no reason in this world to be subjected to all kinds of indignities and you still hanging in that place. Do what? Let me, let me bring Mr. Folaojo here. Mr. Folaojo, um, you write uh, opinions in the papers and some of these things uh, as they come to you. Uh, Mr. Folaojo, tell us what you make of the situation. Oh, thank you very much, uh, Sheung, for this uh, privilege. I, I just want to make one or two things clear before um, I answer the question. Number one, I don't work for the government. I don't work for Buhari. I don't work for Yemi or Shibajo. I am just uh, answering all these questions uh, based on my status as a citizen of Nigeria. Okay, so my own stand is clear. I, 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 I don't, I don't, I don't, uh, I, I don't work for anybody. Now. We're talking about the vice president of a nation. The position of the vice president of a nation, as well of Nigeria, was 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 at the privilege, at the prerogative of Mr. President. So what I see in all of this is just that people are just making mountains out of a molehill. They are just making stories up where there are no stories. What else do you want this presidency to do? What else do you want this vice president to do that he's not doing? What kind of power do you think he should be exercising that he is not exercising? I mean, I, I, I'm just, I'm just, I'm just baffled by all these stories that we hear and all this. I mean, it's not impossible that politics is an undertone. Politics 2023 drives this. It's very obvious. Of course, there are some people who are probably suspicious of, of, the, of the vice president that he wants to run for president. So let's cut him down. Let's cut him to size. Let's kill him softly. But let me tell you something. God put that man in that position. And there's nothing anybody can do about it. People are asking him to, I mean, the, the, the gentleman that you're, 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 you're talking to in your studio was saying that, I that what, what, I mean, I, I don't understand that. Are you saying that the vice president should resign? You know, should leave his office, abdicate his office, and 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 do what? I think it's just a lot of noise, and I think it's unnecessary.
I, I remember uh, vividly uh, in the time of uh, former President Olusegun Obasanjo and uh, former Vice President Atiku Abubak. At some point, we heard and we saw that President Obasanjo at the time said, there is no, in fact, there was a public function where he said, nothing is happening between himself and uh, Vice President Atiku. We've had it and we've seen it before. As a political journalist, on the current and obvious practical situation, sometimes have a meeting point. And a lot of uh, the things that we hear, some of them we may not be able to come on TV to say our sources and say how this is going to happen. There are uh, clues as to perhaps today that 35 aides have been removed from the office of the vice president. Are you saying that nothing is wrong about that? Okay, now, now, um, um, I'm not really sure, I'm not really sure of the veracity of that story. Now, let's assume that it happened. You have to understand that everybody who works in the vice presidency or in the presidency was appointed by the presidency, all right? So if you hire some people and you think that, that you come to a point that you need to downsize, what is wrong with that? I mean, I, I, I don't know. Is, 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 there, is there anything wrong also, uh, Mr. Ojo? Yeah. Uh, is there anything also wrong about the fact that when you have an active vice president in office and a bill is taken, flown uh, to London for the president's assent, is there anything wrong in that? I mean, I, I, mean, I, mean I, will, I will not feel comfortable with that kind of exercise, personally. You understand what I'm saying? But what we have not ascertained is... What was the communication that went on between the president and the vice president before that document was taken to London? I'm not defending anything here, but I'm not. I'm, what I'm saying is that do we know the kind of communication that went on between the, the between Buhari and and Oshibajo before they took the paper to, to to London to sign? You understand but, what I'm but, saying? But so, is so there? Are you from from need, what from, from your own insider uh, perspective? Is there a perfect relationship between both men? Let me tell you something. Let me tell you something. This man, Vice President Yemi Oshibajo, is the most loyal, is the most committed human vice president we ever had in the history of Nigeria. I mean, tell me the vice president who has shown so much loyalty and commitment to his principal than Oshibajo. Listen to me. I'm not even talking about commitment to the president alone or loyalty to the president alone, but commitment and loyalty to the nation of Nigeria. My God. That's why the guy is so popular everywhere he goes. I mean, what are we talking about? This man, this man, he was a man who just came from nowhere. He did not lobby for that position. He did not beg for that position. He did not pay anybody for that position. He was just taken from the blues and pulled there by God of heaven. The man is a representation of decency. The man is a representation of what Nigeria ought to be. The man is a representation of what our governance should be in Nigeria. I don't know why they are vilifying this guy and casting him down and talking all this stuff. I, 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 don't, I, don't, I, don't, I, don't, I don't know. I don't know why people are doing that. But the, 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 the crucial point in this is that all of this insinuation and noises, you know, people are creating all over the place is politics, either from the opposition or from the people who are suspecting that Yemi or Shibajo wants to run to be president. Uh, Mr. Falaojo, Mr. Falaojo, we will we'll go on break, but let me ask you this question. And perhaps we'll give yeah. a lot of people food for thought before we come back. Where do you think 2023 presidency should be rotated to? The South, the North, the South, where the South, South? The, the, the problem that we have addressing issues like that in Nigeria is that our constitution is silent about that. What does the constitution say? Well, about in the spirit of the rotation, rotation, in the spirit of zoning, where, do you, where do you, does your mind tell you politically it will go? Now, for, 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 for the sake for the sake of of peace, for the sake of 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 our uh, uh, coexistence, for the sake of of Nigeria as a nation, of course, the presidency has 
been sitting in the north in the last eight years, in the last four or five years. It's going to run for, for eight years. Common sense dictates that presidency should come to the south. Okay, we'll, we'll, we'll hold it for a moment. Uh, Mr. Falao, just stay with us. We'll take a breather. When we come back, I'll allow Mr. Odumakin to come back into the conversation. And you will also listen when I asked Mr. Garbashehu about this matter uh, of the president not handing over to the vice president to become the acting president while the president is going to be away for three weeks. You'll get to hear his response when we come back from the break. Join us again, everyone. So much, everyone, for staying with us, and welcome back to, uh, to the conversation we are having with Mr. Nika Uduma King and Mr. Folaojo. Mr. Folaojo has joined us from uh, the United States, from Wisconsin, and Mr. Uduma King, a social commentator and spokesperson of Afeni Ferry, is about the relationship between President Muhammad Buhari and his vice, uh, Professor Yemi Oshimbajo. The presidency has said there is no rift, there is no uh, disagreement between both men, and we're dissecting that issue, some of the development uh, that happened. Mr. Udumakin, I'd like you to respond to what Mr. Fula Ojo said. You mentioned something, and I'd like you to listen to what Mr. Garba Shewu said on Sunday when I asked him a question about why the president did not uh, send a letter, transmit a letter to the National Assembly, uh, uh, leave, giving the VP the powers of an acting president. Uh, everyone, take a listen to what Mr. Garba Shewu said. The president is uh, on a private trip outside the country, partly on vacation, partly at work. The constitution of Nigeria is very clear that 21 days is a period of absence which uh, cannot be justified. In which case, if the trip is up to or beyond 21 days, the president of Nigeria must remit a letter to the National Assembly and get, if it is a governor, that is the story. In this instance, Mr. President is away for 17 days. In fact, he will be doing government work from where he is. Uh, he tomorrow will be signing an important uh, bill uh, for the country from where he is. And that tells you that uh, he's hands on, even when he's outside the country. Mr. Udmakin, you heard Mr. Gabashew. I wanted to respond to what Mr. Falo just said and also what Mr. Gabashew said. Well, I think there are only two things to respond to in the, what the gentleman from Wisconsin was saying. And for the sake of our young people, who may not know better, the office of the vice president of Nigeria is not, that, it's not the discretionary office of the president. The vice president is not the chief in the palace of the president. It's a constitutional office. And the office assigns some roles about the fact that the president can assign functions to him. That's the first thing to say. The second question was asking, am I asking to resign? That's what honor depicts. If a man has gone through all the private has gone through in the past few weeks, there's nothing that honor dictates. Because, I mean, Mr. Now, yes. for the matter of the 35 eights yes. that have been mentioned, yes. we understand that they were not actually sacked. No, they, they were sacked. Re -re reposted because some of these uh, duties have been taken out of the office of the vice president. For example, those that are under the office of uh, uh, the humanitarian affairs and now who are not reporting to the vice president are naturally just taken to the ministry of humanitarian affairs. So this is somewhat uh, uh, exigency. This is somewhat what the office of the president also provides to be able to act in this capacity. Is there anything wrong in that? No, no, yeah, well, it's, the, question, the truth about that is that, for that uh, I don't even think that the vice president needs more than uh, his uh, spokesman today, because I don't know what's, what is left of that office. In any case, we, are, we should also come down to the question of when this uh, president was campaigning, they are talking about the fact that they have to cost down the cost of governance. That's the vice president who have 35 years doing what? Only recently, even the president said that we were not going to have, it was not going to have, to have a first lady. First lady was, was given six eights. And so you cannot understand why the cost of governance is not going down. But the important matter in this is that I listened to Mr. Garabashi, my, my good brother. I cannot quite, actually quite make a good sense of what I was saying. 
Is that because, because the provision of law, yes. the, the constitution provides that the president, if he's going to be out of the country more than 21 days. I will, you should give that section of the constitution. No, because yeah, I, I can give you because that's I mean, we are for more than 21 days. Under section 145, stop section yes. 2. He says that if the president does not make the transmission within 21 days of the proceeding on vacation, the National Assembly shall by a simple majority resolution mandate the VP to carry out the functions of the office of the president in his absence. In that, uh, uh, in, that in the section preceding it, he says that as the amended, especially by the first alteration of the constitution in 2010, is the governing law on the matter. I mean, this is yes. the position. Under that section, whenever the president is proceeding on vacation or is otherwise unable to discharge the function of his office, the president is required to transmit a written declaration to that effect to the Senate president and the Speaker uh, to, of the House to enable the VP to act in his stead so within... Within yeah, I, 21 I guess, days, yes, that is position of the law. That's what I'm saying. Exactly. But the president is not going to be on this uh, on the private tip more than 17 days. The second, this, that, that, that's the second leg of it. The second leg, where he's saying that the National Assembly can force, can, can, can empower the VP to act, is where the president does not transmit powers. That's and, subsection and, two. And, so if it's now away for 21 days. Over the 21 national, days, the, yeah. The National Assembly can act. But, but the, the president, president says he's going to be away but, for 17 but the, days. But the preceding thing is that, the preceding session is that when you are leaving the country, you are expected to have power. What now? By the time the National Assembly now begins to force the president, affairs VP to become, they are ready, it, it doesn't mean that the, 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 the president has already violated the constitution. And that's why. So the first leg of it is that when you are traveling out, transmit. Mm -hmm. So it's why you don't transmit 21 days, and the National Assembly says, ah, no, something's wrong. VP, you come acting president. All right. So Mr. Mr. Bwando, stay with us. Yes. Uh, Mr. Folaojo in Wisconsin, please stay with us. We will pause this conversation. We will discuss also the spirit of the 2023 presidency, which is also getting into the fray of Nigeria politics. But there is a matter we need to discuss now, and that is the controversies over the Niger Delta Development Commission, NDDC, which has become a major talking point in the country. A group has dragged the federal government to court over what it says is an uneven and unfair appointment made by President Buhari, which according to the group, defeats the basic spirit of the rotational policy of the leadership in the NDDC. A group called the International Society for Social Justice and Human Rights is insisting that the presidency breached Section 4 of the NDDC Act. Let's speak to... Uh, the deputy, the vice chairman of the APC South South, Mr. Hilliard Etta, he joins us from our Abuja studio. Thank you so much, Mr. Etta, for coming tonight on the program. There has been a lot of talk about what is happening in the NDDC. For example, this group that has gone to court to say the rotation does not favor, uh, for example, Mr. Odubu, who is from Edo State, that it should naturally have gone to Delta State based on what the provision of the NDDC Act uh, provides, that the rotation should have been to Delta State. What do you make of that? What do you make of that? Well, uh, thank you, um, Mr. Kimbaloye. Um, I, I don't think that it is proper for me to discuss a matter that is within uh, the president of the judiciary uh, uh, for now. If the people feel very or felt very strongly about uh, the nomination of these individuals to the governing council of the NDDC, and it is in their right to approach the court, and when that is done and uh, uh, it is before the court, I think it, it, it inhibits us from discussing such matters. Uh, I mean, you are from the Niger Delta. Interesting thing. What is in the spirit of the NDDC Act? Where do you think it should go naturally this time around? This time around. Well, I, I, I in, the, in this, I, 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 first of all, I, like I said earlier on, it is uh, a material for me to begin to speculate uh, because the matter is before the court. Uh, we will leave it until the court decides uh, uh, for all of us, where it thinks that uh, uh, whether the chairman or the managing director or the executive directors, wherever they should go to, I, I will not want to speculate. Uh, my, my thinking 
is that the president has nominated people into the governing council and that they have a lot of work to do in the Niger Delta and that we do not have time to waste in all of this politics that is going on right now. We believe that the council should hit the ground running, the governing council of the NDDC should hit the ground running and see to it that the mandate for which they were nominated for is discharged honorably and efficiently and competently for the benefit of the Niger Deltans. There's been a lot of uh, controversy over the steering committee when it was inaugurated by the Minister of Niger Delta Affairs. He did say that that committee will uh, be on ground uh, for, from the, uh, for the period of the probe until the uh, NDDC board, the new one to be headed or chaired by Mr. Odubu, is inaugurated by the president. But a lot of people have agitated that uh, the steering committee should not stand. The interim or the acting committee should not stand. What's your view? Uh, thinking person in the Niger Delta uh, is, um, uh, is happy or embraces the, the audit as ordered by Mr. President. Uh, that has nothing to do with the, uh, uh, you know, the constitution of the governing council, uh, which has been done by Mr. President, has been screened. The members of that governing council have been screened by the Senate and they have been cleared to start work. Now, the um, audit that has been ordered by Mr. President is not going to be done by either the Interim Management Council or the Governing Council itself. It has to be done by internationally recognized, reputable audit firms. Now, you remember that the Mr. President had said that this probe will begin from 20, 2001 till date. That is a period of about 18 years. Now, uh, nobody has come out to say that the members of the Interim National, so-called Interim National uh, Interim Management Committee are auditors or internationally recognized auditors and that they're ones that are going to pretend over the audit of the NDDC. So for us in the Niger Delta, the uh, interim Management Council or Committee or whatever it is called is strange to the act establishing the NDDC. And to that effect, it is null and void. The, 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 the act that establishes the NDDC provides for the constitution of the governing council, as has been done by Mr. President. It is the place of Mr. President to nominate that board it is the place of the Senate of the Federal Republic of Nigeria to screen that board and confirm it. These processes have been, have been completed. And we expect members of that governing council to take over the reins of leadership of the NDDC and provide the, the intervention that is expected from the NDDC to the lives uh, of, of the Niger Deltans. When you hear that... 300 projects, allegations of 300 projects that are being uh, spearheaded by one lawmaker. And you hear that uh, about 1 billion naira is being given out every month. And series of allegations that the NDDC has been made as a conduit pipe uh, for siphoning money, that the a a NDDC is like an ATM, that people just go there and take money. And when the minister says, we want that probe to be done before the new board is inaugurated. Does, uh, does that make sense to you? It doesn't make sense to me. Uh, the inauguration of the uh, governing council of the NDDC is not um, uh, mutually exclusive to the demand of Mr. President for, uh, for an audit of the operations of the NDDC. Um, like I said earlier on, the people so nominated into the Interim Management Committee are not themselves uh, internationally recognized or reputable auditors. So it, it has absolutely nothing to do with the operations of the NDDC. We have heard of all of these uh, things that have been going on in the NDDC. NDDC. That is why we are very happy that uh, internationally recognized, reputable uh, audit firms 
should be given the responsibility of auditing the NDDC without any interference by anybody, whether in the governing council or whatever, or whatever person. Those people should be, should be uh, appointed by Mr. President for the purposes of auditing the operations of the NDDC. It, has, it, it, it is not mutually inclusive. It, is not, it has absolutely nothing to do with the day-to-day -day running of the NDDC from now henceforth. Absolutely nothing to do. And let me also say, for emphasis, that the law establishing the NDDC does not envisage the establishment of any interim management committee. And so it is an illegality and it should not stand. What do you think is happening? Uh, is it politics that we see playing out? Uh, it's the same. Uh, most of the, uh, the people who are talking about this and most of the things that we hear about, uh, about the APC people and the people in the party, what do you think is happening? A power play or what? Well, uh, Mr. Kimbaloye, I, I, I dare to say that I cannot, I am not in a position to speculate about the, the, the activities of the Minister of the Niger Delta Affairs. Um, I only speak of what is on the table, and what is on the table is that the Minister has brought a contraption that is not known to the law. And we are saying that because it is not known to the law, we, we have considered it or we consider it null and void. Uh, and so, because I do not know, uh, and let me tell you, I, I said in a press release that it is sad that every time a Niger Delta is given the opportunity to superintend over the Ministry of Niger Delta Affairs and the NDDC is attached to that ministry, uh, he, he tends to use it for politics. He tends to use it for politics, for po personal political. Uh, uh, things. And is this what is happening the, right the, now? The, the, the act, Mr. Aita, the is act this what is happening now? The NDDC. It, uh, yes, I, I am sure that is exactly what is happening now. Let me tell you that the law establishing the NDDC envisaged that the NDDC shall be under the close monitoring of Mr. President. It shall be only under the supervision of Mr. President and the Commander-in-Chief of the Armed Forces of Nigeria. Uh, see, let me, the, let me, the before we allow you go, sort, Mr. Eta, uh, before we allow you go, Mr. Eta, give us a sense of uh, the conversation that we've been having about the relationship between the President and uh, the Vice President. It's lots and lots of talk about that. What is happening in your party? <laughs> I, I think it is a storm in the teacup. I, I don't think that there is anything to... Uh, on toward uh, in the relationship between Mr. President and Mr. Vice President. I, I, I think that people are making a hill, a mountain out of a mole hill. I believe that um, whatever is done is not done in, in bad faith. Uh, I, there's nothing that the President has done, uh, whether in, in the past or, or now, that has shown that he does not regard Mr. The, the Vice President. I, I believe that um, uh, it is taken out of context. Most times, these things are taken out of context, and um, a, a lot of Nigerians, a lot of Nigerians, love uh, drama, uh, political drama. And, and I'm not surprised that they would, you know, they would take any, something that is of no significance and make it look as if it is uh, of national importance. For me, that is the way I look at the relationship between Mr. President and Mr. Vice President. Mr. Hilliard Etta, National Vice Chairman, South-South of the All Progressives Congress, thank you so much for talking to us. Thank we'll take a break, and when we come back, 2023 politics, the relationship between President Muhammad Buhari and his Vice Professor Yemi Oshibajo gets our attention again. My guests, we weigh in and come back into the conversation. Join us again, everyone.
Thank you so much, everyone, for staying with us. We've been trying to get uh, Mr. Omenazu Jackson, who is uh, the Chancellor of the International Society for Social Justice and Human Rights, the group that dragged the federal government to cut over this matter of the NDC uh, on Skype from Port Harcourt. Uh, but it seems that network is uh, uh, not uh, being friendly tonight. But we have him uh, perhaps on telephone now to speak to us on the reasons why they went to cut and what they are praying the courts to grant them. Uh, Mr. Jackson, thank you so much for talking to us on Channel TV. You've gone to court over this NDDC matter. You've dragged the office of the Secretary to the uh, Government of the Federation to court and the federal government. What are the prayers that you're seeking uh, at the court? Um, Mr. Jackson, if you can hear me this time, let me put a question again. Uh, you've gone to court, dragged the office of the SSG and the federal government to court over the NDDC nomination and the appointment that have been made to the board of the NDDC. Why? All right, uh, we lost him there. So we hope at some point we'll be able to get, at least get a sense of why they want to cut. And they said that what has been done by the federal government is illegal based on the spirit of rotation to the board of the NDC. So much controversy in that. Let's uh, move uh, to our other issue. And uh, Mr. Odumakin is still with us, as well as Mr. Falojo from Wisconsin in the United States. Thank you so much, Mr. Odumakin. Uh, let, me, let, let me get your view. Uh, before we went on that break, I yes. said we will come back to this matter. Sure. Uh, a lot of people, are, I mean, you heard what Mr. Eta said. Look, it's a stormy in a teacup. That's what he said. Well, you see, there's a new book that just came out by Essie, and she's a political journalist in Turkey. It's titled, How to Lose a Country, Seven Steps from Democracy to Dictatorship. One of the steps you talk about is creating your own citizen. When a strong man comes to power, he creates his own citizens, and whatever the leader does, it's okay, no problem. Gloss it over, wishing it away. Because I don't know why anybody can say that this is a storm in a teacup. Over, over weeks, we have seen severe assaults on the office of the vice president. Way too down of his office, uh, of the functions assigned to him, like I said earlier on, so those functions are the discretion of the president. But you don't, you don't see... Constitutional you don't, but the president, I don't think the VP is, is concerned about this matter. What? From the way you see him, I mean, if there, if there is anything really happening, you, you think the VP will not be concerned? Well, you, the only you wouldn't see it on him? Or the only, see it ha his the only guess I can hazard is that there may be a link between the silence and the allegations that have been thrown out, which has, which is threatened to sue some people, which has not done, and on which the president presidency has kept quiet to this day. I mean, how can they make such allegations against your, your, your vice presidents? And the fact we will not say what you, allegations have been made against ministers, uh, people less have a in this government that government has come out to, to, to make a statement. But for the number two man to be accused of all those things, to me, Frank and them were saying, and for Frank to keep for the president to keep quiet up to now. Then there was more than media. So, Mr. Odumaki, you think that the office of the VP has been relegated? Clearly. And you think that this perhaps is, has a major effect about the 2023 politics? Well, 2023, for me, I, well, I have to say now, yes, uh, the VP is interested in 2023 and just remember that, but these are separate issues. Do you think uh, the, the VP is popular enough uh, to get that kind of clout that could give that kind of uh, inclination? Well, for me, you know, but, you know, ambition is a different stuff. Because I know that in the last special elections, he lost his polling units by about 200 votes in Lagos here. But ambitions are made of finer stuff. Where do you think the presidency should go in 2023? In the South, of course. Which part of the South? Well, any part of the South. Do you think it will go to the Southwest? For me, really, at this stage, it's not about Southwest, South, South, Southeast. There are there will be political arithmetics within the parties, which are not on them. But fear is fear. After it years enough, the next place is out. What if it doesn't come to the south? Then that will create some disequilibrium. 
because I've had so many of, of opinions from the north, from Miiti Allah to Professor Angola Bulai, to so many others saying that, oh, no, 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 we are keeping the presidency for 2023. That will mean creating social disequilibrium, because there will be consequences. Because when you sort of look at the way the power of the presidency has been used by a session of this country the last four years, and we are now in the next level of it. So now we want the continuation of that. That means that we are saying that we have conquered the rest of the country. All right. L let me bring back Mr. Fala Ojo. Mr. Mr. Ojo, uh, if uh, in terms of public perception, and uh, when this kind of situation is happening, um, what do you think should be done urgently to douse this kind of public perception of a possible rift between the number one man and is vice not the number two man in the country. Yeah, uh, thank you, Sean. Now, you see, the, the, there's nothing going on between the president and the vice president. These are just made up stories. You understand what I'm saying? Now, all these advices and counsels that my brother, I've not met him, uh, but I, I read a lot about him, all these counsels and advices that he's now given, I was just wondering where was he? when in the last 16 years before Buhari came in, where were they? Where were they? Where were they? Nigeria should have moved forward better than where we are right now. But what I'm saying is all this, they are just creating this, this rift that is non-existent. There's nothing anybody wants to do about, I mean, there's no problem. There's no problem. Now, what I was, what I was saying earlier before, before we went on break was that all this stuff just has to do with politics, 2023. And my brother knows that. He knows that. So, so, so it's all about, so, so, so I don't think there's anything going you, 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 on. You, 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 Mr. Ojo, uh, apologies if I'm about in, into your line of uh, uh, delivery of your thought. Uh, the, 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 the thing is that for the VP to be in the line of uh, supposed fire, if there is anything like that, uh, is perhaps maybe is uh, a big contention if 2023 politics is behind all of this. You think that Professor Yemi Oshibajo is a big contention for 2023 presidency? Is it, are, you, are you asking me if it's qualified? Absolutely. Of course. No. Uh, it's qualification not. part of it, but I mean, pff, uh, of course, we obviously know Professor Yemi Ojibajo is qualified for any office in the country as it stands right now. But the question is that in terms of contention, that popularity, in terms of uh, his name being top on the lips of those who are power brokers. Oh, there, there are personalities in Nigeria who are qualified to be president. I mean, there are people that are names that are thrown out there now that, you know, people are thinking that these people want to run, but we have not heard from any one of them if they are running or not. So if 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 people are, 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 are swelling up popularity for Shibaja because of what he does, this man is so hardworking. Listen, listen to me. Nigerians have never seen a politician who touches hearts of regular people like Yemi Shibaja. The guy goes beyond his call of duty to reach out to the poor, reach out to the needy, reach out to the helpless, reach out to the hungry. He carries Nigerians in his heart. It's obvious, it's all over his face. And I'm telling you, Nigerians can read through that. That's why he's popular. Nigerians cannot be fooled anymore. They see it in this guy, that this guy loves Nigeria. Uh, Mr. Mr. Falaojo, uh, we, we, we probably will leave it at that, but let me get Mr. Dumakin's final thought before we close. Well, my final thought was that, is that, the fact that uh, we were pretending to deny the obvious that the relationship between the vice president and the president was what is worth three months ago today. The actions I've been taking the last two months against the office of the vice president shows clearly, you know, I come with rubber ground, that when the owner of the house begins to, hold, to show the peel head of the yam to the visitor, it's time to go home that's killing him. Mr. Yemi Odumakin, thank you so much for coming. Yinka. <laughs> Mr. Yinka Odumakin, yeah. maybe because we've said yes. Yemi Odumakin for a long time. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. So, <laughs> thank you so much, Mr. Thank Yinka, Yinka Odumakin, spokesperson of our yes. and social commentator, as well as uh, Mr. Falaojo, a popular uh, uh, opinion writer in uh, some of Nigeria's dailies.
uh, is presently in Wisconsin, the United States. Thank you so much for your time and your thoughts that you've shared with us on the program tonight. But that's our show for tonight, uh, everyone. Many thanks for watching. I'm Sean Akimale. Bye for now. <laughs>